Howdy, everybody. I want to tell you about something terrifying I found just now. Uh, I also want to answer a bunch of questions that you guys sent. I fielded them. I have them screenshotted right here on my phone. Some really good questions. And that's going to make for an interesting podcast. This podcast is brought to you by My Bookie. It's summertime. It's almost fall. And at My Bookie, that can only mean one thing. It's winning season. Winning season means doubling your first deposit. Winning season means free bets, super contest, survivor, and more. At My Bookie, Winning season is all about your chance to win big. Bet NBA playoffs, you could bet NHL playoffs, you could bet Major League Baseball, you could bet UFC, and then some. The craziest sports summer of your lifetime is right here, right now. It's simple. Make your picks, win big, collect your cash, invest in your intuition. Select from hundreds of future bets, or you could bet games in real time with my bookies, life betting. You know, put that big brain of yours to good use. Use the promo code GRANGER. That's my name. And double your first deposit. New players get up to $1,000 in free play designed to add more excitement to the sports you love and the games you bet. Thousands of cross sports wagers, props, and parlays await. Sign up now to bet with the best and celebrate your victory. Your winning season begins today only at my bookie. This is such a fun time for me because we have an album coming out. September 25th. I've talked about it a lot, uh, on, whether it's on the Smiths that comes out on Tuesdays and Thursdays, the Trek restoration, which we're getting close to finishing Earl Dibble's truck, guys. That's really fun. Uh, and I've talked a lot about, on all these channels, this album, but man, we're just so pumped about it. And you could help me make that album have a big release by pre-saving it or pre-buying it or pre-ordering it or pre-adding it to your playlist. Anything that basically is if it says pre before it on the place that you listen to music, that helps us. Um, if you use Spotify or Apple Music or maybe you just listen on YouTube, um, I just appreciate you guys. And if anything, like I say, if, if anything, just I hope you listen to these two new songs, Country Things and Hate You Like I Love You and let me know what you think Comment below. If you're watching this podcast on YouTube, comment below. And uh, if, you've, if you're a longtime listener to this podcast, thank you for that. I appreciate you guys so much. I hope that you go back and you catch up and listen to some old episodes. They started long ago just um, kind of telling the story of who I am and where I came from. And I love, I love the platform and I love where it is right now. This is episode 48. Welcome to the Granger Smith Podcast. Yee yee. For this, you want to tell me? I want to tell you something that is, oh man, this gives me the heebie jeebies, it gives me the goosebumps. We're living, Amber and I and the kids are living in a barn right now. We're living in an RV, uh, an, an awesome RV from Explore USA, and we're building or we're about to start building a, a farmhouse that we've designed out in the pasture in front of the barn. So, I thought it'd be a great adventure to live in this barn. Um, as, as opposed to, you know, some people when they build a house, they, they live with friends or they lease or rent a house. Um, they get a little condo and let, I just didn't want to do any of that. I wanted an adventure and I wanted something my kids could remember for a long time. So I told Amber, I said, what if we actually got an RV, pulled it into one of the barns, which is a great perk of the property to have these two barns. It didn't have a house on it, but it was a beautiful piece of land and it had two barns and a windmill and a well. So I was like, well, we got, you know, 
half the battle right there. All I, all I ever want on property is barns anyway. So this one's already got it. Why don't we live in it? And then we could have this adventure and we could watch the, the house come up. Uh, the kids could have great memories. And what has happened though, and it's been awesome, but it has a few setbacks. And one of the setbacks is we are at the mercy of the elements at all times. Like if it's hot outside and it's been 105 in Texas these last few weeks, it is hot in, in that barn. I mean, it gets up to over 100 inside the barn, and it's insulated. Um, and then the RV, of course, it has ACs on it, but it has trouble keeping up with that kind of temperature. Uh, so we're really looking forward to September when things are cooling down and we could relax a little bit and actually hang out in the barn itself instead of being cooped up in the RV and, and sweating. But... The, that being said, I got to tell you something terrifying. Last night, and before I start that, let me just say, we have seen we have been at the mercy of the elements. We've seen a lot of stuff. And, and we, the last several years, Amber and I have lived in Central Texas for a long time. And so we're used to scorpions and spiders and snakes and, and mice and lizards and skunks and possums, and raccoons bats. We've had bats in the barn. So you name it, we've been exposed. I just killed a rattlesnake uh, day before yesterday. Um, luckily, I was dove hunting with Lincoln. So I walked up on the on a rattlesnake in the pasture with a loaded shotgun on my shoulder. So that was convenient. Uh, but we have seen all these creatures and they have all made their appearances in the barn. Had a baby snake in the bathroom in the barn. Uh, like I said, we've had a bat. We've had countless scorpions that I find in my boots that I dump out, <laughs> which is always shake your boots before you put them on. Great piece of advice there. The scorpion might fall out. But we see spiders, a lot of spiders, and we're used to tarantulas. We're used to spiders. But in this particular barn, we have a lot of wolf spiders. Do you guys know what wolf spiders are? The, the they they get really big. I mean, those suckers will get as big as they'll get as big as my palm without the fingers. And we see we see them everywhere, and we're just kind of used to them. It's not that big a deal. We you know we go into the bathroom to brush our teeth in the morning, and there's a there's a big wolf spider like right there on the ground, and. We usually kill them, you know. I, I don't really mind them that much besides they're just hideous to look at. So we usually just get a paper towel and, you know, drop it on top of them and just kind of squish them with your fingers and throw them in the trash. That's kind of the routine, <sighs> except for last night. And here's my story. Last night, I'm getting out of the bath, out of the, taking a shower, and I'm just coming in there with my shorts on. Nothing else, just shorts on. And I walk through barefoot all the time. I, I walk outside barefoot. I walk in the pasture barefoot. I walk on the gravel road barefoot. I walk all in the barn barefoot. I probably shouldn't do that. Like I said, I killed a snake the day before yesterday. Uh, and scorpions are everywhere. But I'm just, I just don't care anymore. And so I just, I'm barefoot. And I'm walking through the barn and I look over and Gypsy and Remy, our two dogs, are laying in their beds. And right next to them is this big wolf spider. Big. It's bigger than anything I've described. I mean, it's, it's all the way as big as my hand, including my fingers, spread out. And I was like, ah. Oh. I mean, it looked, when I, when I saw it, because it was kind of dark in the barn at night, when I saw it, it looked like, like a crab. Like you're out on the beach. Have you ever been to the beach in the, at night and all the crabs come out? It looked like a big crab. And I was like, God, I got a little shiver. Just like, golly, that's a big old mama wolf spider right by the dogs. And as I got a little closer to it, I kind of crept in and got a little closer. And I, I noticed that it was, not only was it big, it's a big wolf spider, but it was super hairy, like a lot of hair and not, not tarantula hair. I don't mind tarantulas at all. I could live with tarantulas. They, they're slow. They don't bother humans. But this one was a really hairy mama wolf spider. The reason I say mama is because they're massive. And then I got closer and I was like, I mean, not only hairy, but like naughty hairy, like bumpy hairy, all on her abdomen and all, you know, it's like really hairy. And I was like, this is gross. So I got my boot, my boot's sitting on the ground. 
I pick up my boot. And I'm just like, I'm just going to knock her out, smash her real quick, get a paper towel, be done with this. And I'm not even thinking. This is a routine thing for us guys. Get that boot. And I get it right on and I go, whack. And dude, as soon as I whacked her, right on top, squished her. I kid you not, 10,000 baby spiders explode everywhere. All over me, all over the dogs. They spread out on the, and the, like thousands of them are running in every direction. It's like a straight up horror movie. They're running in every direction and they're tiny. I mean, they're like the, pin, the tip of a pin. They're just tiny. Thousands of them just every direction. And so that's what, that's what the hair was. Like, that's what the naughty, ugly hair, that's what I thought looked like naughty hair. She was covered in 10,000 baby wolf spiders. And they went everywhere. And I, oh my God, I just sat there. When I, I realized what had happened and I realized they were all on me and all on the dogs and all on the floor and I'm barefoot and they're just running on my feet and running everywhere. Big squished mama spider right in the middle of all of them. When I realized what had happened, I just got goosebumps from the head to my toes. And, and I just, the only thing I could do is I went and got a big shop vac and just literally went, and they were still just scurrying everywhere. So I got the shop vac and just vacuumed all, all of the babies on me, on my chest, on my legs, all in the dog's beds and just vacuumed them up. And I was like, oh, another day in the barn. This is what's funny is then this morning, this morning when I was coming, getting ready to come here to the Yee Yee farm, uh, Amber had the same thing happen to her. She, so she went around the corner and there was one. And I had already told her the story. So she knew when she saw that hairy mama, she knew that it ain't no hair. That's babies hanging on for dear life on the mama back. So just so you know, I'm not lying. Okay. Everyone get your phone and Google mother wolf spider with babies. Google that, okay? And you could see exactly what I'm talking about. Let me see. Mother wolf spider with babies. And then hit images. Y'all, for real. Yeah, uh, y'all ain't ready for this. Some of you have probably seen it before. I don't know. Some of you may have. It's, it is. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm not showing the camera right now. It's the most. Oh my God. Look at this. I don't know if you can see that or not on the camera. Oh my God. Oh my God. I got goosebumps just talking about it. Ah, oh, terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Is it okay if I read you guys some questions? I I got a bunch of questions on Instagram. This one's from Big Tony. And he says, with all the different instrumentations and in country things, will you be playing it live? And he's talking about the song Country Things has a lot of, it's got banjo, steel, fiddle, mandolin, acoustic, um, it's got basically has way more instruments than we have band members. So yeah, we've been working on that song and the way we have it right now, Todd is going to be playing a mandolin fish. My other guitar player is going to be playing dobro and then I'll be playing acoustic. So we're just going to do the best we can. Um, and that song will probably like any other song we play live will evolve as we go forward. So, yeah, it's a good question, and I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, but we're going to definitely play country things in our live show starting this weekend at Billy Bob's in Fort Worth and see how that goes. Shane on Instagram says, what made you make hate you like I love you? And that is it's funny because back-to-back questions about the two songs that are out right now. Hate you like I love you is an idea that I wanted to write for a long time. And I was with two of my buddies on wildflower, my bus, we were out on tour early 2019 and we'd written a little bit already. And, and I got together with these guys and I was thinking about this idea of how hate and love take the same amount of passion 
to have those either one of those two emotions. And so I told the guys, I said, hey guys, question. What is the opposite of love? And everyone says, hate. You're right, like unanimously, hate. It's like, no, it's not. The opposite of love is indifference. The opposite of love is, I don't, I could care less. I don't care either way. That's the opposite of love. But a close brother, a close cousin to love is hate. Because it takes, it takes a lot of emotional passion to love. It takes a lot of emotional passion to hate. So it's a close cousin. It's not opposite. So I, I said, what if we wrote this song about this, this guy that's just kind of desperately misses this girl and he loves her and he wishes that he could change that love to hate and he wishes he could transfer that energy from all love to hate which is how how we get to the line i just want to hate you like i love you so that's where that song came from and we had a blast writing it blast recording it and um if you guys haven't heard it i hope you I hope you get to listen to it um, Eric on Instagram says, whose idea was it to make the original Country Boy video? So I believe you're talking about the first Earl Dibbles video ever when Earl Dibbles debuted on, on YouTube. And um, we all believe it's called Earl Dibbles Jr. Country Boy Part 1. And that is a very important video to me in my life because it started uh, Yee Yee. For, that was the first time I said Yee Yee was in that video. Um, it started Earl Dibbles Jr., which led to um, a, a lot of things in my career. It led to um, making the album Dirt Road Driveway a lot more popular because there was two Earl Dibbles songs on there. It led to an, um, our first national tour. Um, it led to my first sold-out show outside of the state of Texas, which was in Iowa, by the way. And it, it changed... Um, it changed the trajectory of my life. That one video is the first million view video on YouTube I ever had. Uh, so that was my first viral video. And that was my goal to get a million views on YouTube was my goal. And that happened in 2011. Um, Eric's question is, whose idea was it? Uh, it was probably, I would probably give the credit to my brother Tyler um, to actually shoot the video, but the character Earl I'd had that voice and that character for a long time, a couple years before the video. And I kind of knew that we were going to, we were going to shoot a video eventually. And it was Tyler that nailed it down and said, Hey man, let's go shoot that, that country guy. Let's go shoot that video. And we were at mom and dad's place and I grabbed some overalls. I grabbed a white tank top, grabbed some boots, uh, an old trucker cap, um, got some Sharpies, drew on some tattoos. These were just all, uh, things that are just laying around in the closet in mom and dad's um, gotten in what was my old truck when I was a teenager that then became Earl's old truck that we are now restoring on YouTube on this same channel. And um, that video was born and it changed my life. Jordan says, how do you stay so strong in the Lord, but constantly stay busy with songs, videos, etc.? Another great question, and um, it's not easy. And it's, it's like anything with life, it's a matter of priorities. Um, you could tell any husband and wife, like, how do you stay committed to your wife when you're so busy with work and everything? It's like, well, having my wife is a priority, so I put her before my job. Um, so that's the same thing with God, like this question. And, um, I've had to, I've had to make the Lord my top priority. Um, I've had to place him there and that importance there. And in doing that, when you do that, it's not something you just say, you actually have to act on that. And so, um, part of my daily prayer is, so that God strengthens my desire to seek him and long for him and wonder about him and love him and search for him and ask for him and think of him and 
have him infiltrate everything into my life. And that's my prayer because that's what, that's what I need to constantly cultivate so that I don't start going through the day and go, you know what? I haven't even thought about God. I just, I thought I was doing good. Like I'm good, man. I, I, I bet things are going pretty good. This new album's going to come out. Things are going pretty good. Hey, the podcast is, is getting some good hits on it. You know, I must be doing good. And then I have to stop myself and take I out of all that and go, man, thank you, God, for the opportunity for this podcast and from the opportunity to have this platform. And that's a complete um, mental exercise that I put myself through. And every morning I'll read, I'll go and read the word. I'll read the Bible usually about an hour every morning. And that's the first thing I do. And this is a, this is a newer routine for me. I've always read in the mornings, but um, I changed my reading like self-help and philosophy, all, you know, all that kind of stuff. I've have a lot of that, but I changed it to just reading the Bible. So now I'll get up and make a cup of coffee and go out before the sun comes up. And I usually go out to my fire pit outside the barn and uh, barefoot. And I'll sit out there and make a fire. And, and uh, if it's cold right now, it's not. So I don't make fires uh, and, and read. And that's one of my favorite parts of the whole day. Really, it's one of my favorite parts. I'll sit there and I'll open up the book and the first thing I do, and I learned this from this preacher named John Piper, who's an amazing, amazing man of faith. If you want to look him up, he uh, has a, a, a YouTube page called Desiring God, and I listen to him daily. But um, John Piper says it's important to, before you start reading the Bible, to to say a prayer that says, hey God, about to start reading your word. Meet me in the middle of my understanding to what you need me to know from this word. And if you don't say that prayer, then you can get lost. You could daydream. You could lose what you're trying to get out of it. Um, so that's another that's another daily routine, daily habit that I put myself through. And if I could do that, Jordan, on your question, if I could do that hour, that really sets me on a good path. And that's, that leads me to the prayer of let me seek you, let me long for you. And and that helps that set the pace so that while I'm making songs and videos and busy with work and busy with the family, that the foundation is set. And I hope that answers your question. And um, I can get deeper into that if you guys want me to at some point, but that answers that. Um, Keegan on Instagram says, what is the hardest thing you had to overcome throughout your music career? And the, I'm going to take this two different ways. One, the hardest thing I had to overcome through my music career was the two major losses I've had, my, losing my dad and, and losing my son and re-engaging in tour life and music life and entertainment. Can you imagine entertaining, like smiling and making people smile and entertaining while dealing with uh, extreme loss. That's the hardest thing is to, to re-engage and to um, find a new normal again of working and um, selling, trying to sell tickets and sell songs and trying to make people smile um, while you're, while you're dealing with that. So that's the hardest thing, but that might not be the question you're asking, Keegan. Maybe you're asking, what's the hardest thing you had to overcome inside your music career? Like, was it getting a record deal or was it um, working a single at radio? Was it going out and meeting all the radio programmers? Was it um, building one fan at a time through touring? That might be what you're asking. And if you're asking that, I would say the hardest thing I had to overcome, believe it or not, was the the period of, in my life when I lost my voice. And that was, um, there's been a podcast about that, I believe, but I, I, I lost my voice on tour September 5th, 2013. Um, it was a, just a terrible time. I was just roughhousing with some of the guys in the crew and we were wrestling and um, my sound guy, Blake, his forearm hit my Adam's apple 
and it bruised it. And I didn't really know. I just, it's swelled up on me. And I didn't really know that that, what that was doing. But when I sang that night in Illinois, um, it ruptured a blood vessel on the vocal cord and it went out. Like the voice went out like a light, gone, absolutely gone. And that was, um, it was a terrifying thing because then we had to cancel a bunch of shows. I was unknown. I didn't know if my voice would come back the same or different or if it would come back at all. And, um, I had to keep going to these doctors and they would stick a camera down my nose and run it down the back of my throat and to give me a progress report. And then I had to slowly work the voice back up. And, um, so the, the unknown of that circumstance was difficult. It was probably the hardest thing that I had to overcome because I didn't know if I was going to make it. And all I, all I could do was do what the doctors are telling me and have faith. And, uh, I I would just had all these thoughts of like, well, maybe I'll never sing again. Like I'll never, I gotta get a new career. So yeah, that was, that was tough. Really tough. Um, Aiden on Instagram says, are you the founder of Yee Yee Apparel? Yes, I am kind of, because I share that with my brother, Tyler. We're both co-founders and co-owners of Yee Yee Apparel. Um, And then my brother Parker, the youngest brother is like the CEO of this company. And I'm sitting in the in the offices of Yee Apparel at the Yee Farm right now, and so we we share that title, and we were all three there the first day when Earl Dibbles said Yee Yee on camera, which just goes back to that first question about uh, the Country Boy video. So that's where Yee Yee came from, and that's where um, the, a lot of this started. And now we're all owners of this company, and a lifestyle brand really, really, which is something just uh, blows my mind that we, we have a lifestyle brand that is bigger than the music and it's bigger than me as an artist or me as an individual. And, uh, I absolutely love that. I love every bit of it. Tiffany says, will you be releasing a vinyl option for the new album? Tiffany, the answer is yes. We will be, we definitely will release vinyl for this album. And, um, I already have the artwork all approved and it's ready to go, but it's not going to, the vinyl won't come out until the full project comes out. So volume one comes out September 25th and volume two is going to come out around Thanksgiving. So when they both, when, when the Thanksgiving volume two comes out, then they'll be combined and digitally they'll be combined. And then you'll get, um, we'll have at that point with CDs. Remember that? It's called Compact Disc. CDs will be for sale, and it'll have all the songs on it, and then the vinyl will come out. The vinyl will not have all of the songs because there's 16 songs, and a vinyl album, you could only have 20 minutes of music per side on the vinyl. That's the space that it allows you to have. So there, I left some of the songs off, and I tried to pick songs that sounded more vinyl-y. So that if you're a true listener of vinyl, I pick the songs that would sound better on that. But I figure most people probably want vinyl to hang on the wall or to display in some way. That's what I would want. Um, I actually don't have a record player. So I would want one to frame it and put on the wall. But yes, the answer is yes. Yee Yee 066 on Instagram, ask, what's your favorite car? Um, I've never owned a car in my life. So I would have to answer what my, my dream car would be. And that is a 69 charger. The reason for that is because I, as a little boy, it's early, as young as I could possibly remember. I mean, I'm talking four, three or four years old. My very first memories, I remember watching Dukes of Hazzard. And that being my favorite show and being addicted to that show and watching Dukes of Hazzard every single episode and loving that car, that 69 Charger. So, and I've never driven one. Um, and so I would first love to drive one. I would love to test drive one. Um, and then maybe one day, way down the road, I'll own one. But that car 
is absolutely ridiculously expensive. I guess it's because of Dukes of Hazard. I guess because they trashed and wrecked so many of them. Um, maybe there's other reasons I'm not thinking of, but the, those cars, if you want a really nice, like really nice 69 charger, we're talking a hundred thousand dollars guys. Um, like you can get one for maybe 40 or 50,000 and it's junked out. That's how popular that car is. So more than likely I won't own one, but I just want to test drive one. Test driving would be really cool. I'm gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back. You know, something I love these days, especially during the, the craziness of the world, is Cameo. Cameo allows me to uh, be in close contact with fans. It's almost like I get to have meet and greets every day. Um, and what it is, it's an app website where you, you go to Cameo.com and you could find me on there. And then you could request me. You could DM me. We could chat through a DM. Or you could request a video of anything you want me to say. It could be a congratulations or a happy birthday or, or a happy anniversary. Um, it could be something like, hey, everybody, go check out Joe's Barbershop. You know, this is Granger Smith. Tell him I sent you. Yeah, I, do, I do stuff like that, too. Um, but it's a really neat. It's a neat way to stay in close contact with fans that I don't get to see every day on meet and greets anymore. I, and I can't forget to tell you guys that coming up on September 18th, is Yee Yee Apparel's fall launch. And this is our best launch we've ever done. A portion of these proceeds are gonna be going to Veteran Outdoors, um, great friends of ours, and uh, just a great charity organization that helps veterans in need. And it involves outdoors, getting them hunting, getting them fishing. Um, very proud of these guys and what they have done. This launch has some awesome merchandise. and. You, if you want to be a part of it, you, it we're going to launch it at 10 a.m. on Friday, September 18th, and you're going to need to be there in the store right around that time because things will start selling quickly. And I don't want you to see something in a promo and say, oh, man, I love that hat or I love that shirt or I love that women's line that Amber has. I don't want you to, to see that and then turn around and you go there to the store and the mediums or the larges or the XLs are sold out and you don't get it. So go as early as you can to yeeyee.com on Friday, September 18th. Here's a question on Instagram. It says, is your real first name Granger? It is. It is. My name is Granger. That's my first name. And I've had to show my driver's license many times because people, for some reason, think I've maybe made that up or it's like maybe like a stage name or something. But yeah, Granger Smith is my name. Uh, Paddock on Instagram says, do you have a tattoo that is for London and Lincoln? Um, yeah, I have right here under my left arm, I have London, Lincoln and Rivers birthdays in Roman numerals. And it started, obviously, with London, right here in the middle. So this was my first tattoo. The 10, 6, 11 was my very first tattoo. And then I added uh, the boys around that. So, yes, I do. Maybe there'll be more. I don't know. Um, that Ford Kid on Instagram says, Your music and YouTube helped me get through nine months in Iraq. So thank you, Anigi. Thank you, buddy. Thank you for your service. Um, and thank you for telling me that because it makes me, it makes me feel like it's worth it. You know, one of the harder days when we're making music or um, on tour away from our families or like staying up all night trying to record something and it's not right and we're doing it over and over and over. It's good to know it during those times that, man, it, it's worth it. Somebody out there is listening. It's worth it. So thank you, buddy. Um, Nate on Instagram says, how often do you carry your handgun while traveling? Nate, I'm sitting here at this table in this podcast carrying right now. I always carry. So, um, I'm here at Yee Apparel. I'm in my office doing a podcast alone in this room and I'm carrying. They always carry. And partly while I do that is, uh, why I do that is because I'm, I'm used to it. It's like my phone and my wallet. Um, they, it just, it's like a part of my body. So I feel weird. If I'm in gym shorts, I carry. So, uh, especially with the craziness of the world these days, 
You just never know. And I hope to God, I pray to God, it never comes out for any kind of bad reason, right? That's what we all hope. I hope it just, it just stays and is hidden forever, forever, for a thousand years. But, um, unfortunately you, you, you have to prepare that insurance policy for the one crazy one out of a million chance. Um, yeah. Um, Nick Shelton, what's your workout routine? Nick, uh, I, I do strength training and I've been doing it for a long, long time where I do, uh, isolate muscle groups. So usually on Mondays I'll do chest, upper body. Um, usually on Tuesdays I'll do lower body legs. Usually on Wednesdays I'll do back. Thursdays I'll do shoulders and Fridays I'll do arms, um, triceps and biceps. I usually do a little bit of cardio each of those days. And I've done that, give or take, um, switching the days around. I've done that for, man, probably since 2008 consistently. Um, and that's, that's just what I do. I've, I've changed the routine. Sometimes I go super heavy. Sometimes I go super light and a lot of reps. Um, sometimes I alternate. Sometimes I'll combine chest and shoulders. Sometimes I'll combine back and buys. But uh, regardless, I'll do, I keep with the muscle groups and um, I keep them separated. So I'm having rest days in between. Sometimes I'll add an extra chest day, like on Saturday. Um, but, but I always like to have at least 48 hours between muscle groups. Um, Kay Ambry on Instagram says, when are Earl Dibbles Jr.'s new songs coming out? Because I can't wait to hear them. That's a great question, and I'm glad you asked it because on volume one, as you, you've probably got, you all probably know I've been teasing, uh, there's a song called Country and You Know It that features Earl Dibbles. And that is similar to Holler, where I'll sing most of the song and then Earl will come in and sing like a bridge. But Earl has his own songs coming out, two of them, where it hits its only Earl, as you're more like you're used to, like City Boy Stuck and America and Country Boy Love. He has two of those coming out on volume two. So hang on, it's coming. Um, here's a question that says, how do you feel about fans recording a concert and taking pictures instead of soaking it in? And I get what you're saying. I get that we live in a world where uh, people are kind of stuck to, stuck to their screens and they're not taking life in. They're not soaking life in with their own eyeballs. But from a marketing promotion standpoint, um, I, I don't mind if people are filming so that then they can go promote it to their friends because it, it helps me or any other singer if you take a quick recording of me and then blast it out to all your friends and say, look where I am. I'm having so much fun. So that really helps. Um, so I think the answer ultimately is a healthy balance like don't don't film the whole show for your own sake. I hope you get to enjoy the sights and sounds and feels of this concert uh, without being distracted by your device. But it's I think you could throw in a little healthy uh, pull out your phone every once in a while and capture a few things just to have the memories of that. Um, that being said, all that being said, now today, the craziness of the world the tour dates that we do go out on, we are asking that people keep their phones in their pocket. Because if you film something now at a concert and then promote it to everyone, um, it, there's no way that you're not going to, going to offend somebody that's like, oh, we should all be staying at home. You're spreading the virus everywhere. Oh my God, everyone's going to die. So um, it's just better in all of our interest if you just during this time of the virus, just don't, don't, um, propagate the fact that you're at a concert, um, because you might, even if it's socially distanced or whatever, you might not, the, the shot that you're taking and with it could be shooting over people's heads and it just might not look good. So all that being said, Here's Carter Hathaway says, any advice for seniors having trouble deciding what to do with their life after high school? 
that is a deep question that could probably t- be an entire podcast answering. Um, I'll say this, Carter, if you, if you're in high school and you're getting close to graduating, I would, and you, you don't know what to do, right? You don't have a plan. I would, I would try to coast for a little bit. It's probably not what you were expecting, right? It's not the advice you were expecting. Um, but I would coast and it depends on your financial situation. Like maybe, maybe you, you have to make money just to keep bread on the table. Or maybe you can go live with mom and dad and eat out of mom's pantry. Maybe you could live with brother or cousin or best friend. You could stay on the couch. Um, but I would try to coast for a little bit, not in a way to just pass time and be lost in the world, but to exhale and evaluate your next move. Because if you go straight into something quickly, like you go into a trade school, like you want to go into welding school, well, that costs a lot of money. And you sound like you don't even know if you want to go into welding school or if you just go into a job, some kind of career. It's easy to get trapped in that career, especially if you're good at it. You could get stuck in, in climbing a ladder somewhere and look back in 10 years and go, well, now I'm 30 years old and I've wasted the opportunity to go to a trade school or go to a college and get an undergrad or go cha- change. You can get stuck. So I would say for any advice for seniors having trouble deciding what they're going to do after high school, decide, take your time. Don't make your decision. Now, if you don't know what that decision is yet, then don't, then take the pressure off the timeline and coast. Hey, go, go be a bum in Florida and live on the beach. If you could do that (laughs) and, uh, watch the sun come up and sit up there and watch the sun come up in Florida on the beach after you just slept there all night. And, You'll be able to do some thinking. You'll be able to decide what you're going to do in your life during those quiet times like that in in some kind of travel situation. Um, But it's harder if you have to jump straight into another job and straight into a career. So take your time. You have time now, but you won't in 10 years. So take your time. Ricky says, who is your biggest idol and or the country singer you look up to most and why. And those of y'all that have heard this podcast before or heard other episodes of this podcast, um, you know that I don't like that word idol. I always renounce that word and say, let's choose a different word than idol. Um, (laughs) Because if you, if you put the word idol on another human, that human is going to fail you because that's what humans do best. We fail each other because we're human. We're not perfect. We're not God. So let's leave the idol stuff to God. And when it comes to humans, we can call them heroes or role models, right? Heroes can fail. Role models can break. I get it. Um, all that being said, George Strait, I've looked up to George Strait for a long time. He's been a big role model for me. Um, and I started listening to his music early on and kind of emulating that when I was a kid. And um, there's, a, there's a good argument that it was George Strait that got me into this entire mess to begin with. Mason asked me on Instagram, will you ever make it back to North Carolina after this is all over with? And ironically... I got a couple of North Carolinas and a couple of South Carolinas all in the same big batch of questions. Um, but regardless of where you are, wherever you are listening, you know what? I don't know if I have it here. Oh yeah, here it is too. Ever been to Germany? Will you come to Germany? I got two Germanies in this. So let me say this for North Carolina and Germany, wherever you are, when this is over with, we're going everywhere we definitely will be back to North Carolina. We definitely will be back to South Carolina. No, like no doubt, many times we will be back. We'll never go a calendar year and skip a state like yours. Um, in fact, I don't think we'll really skip any of the lower 48 ever in a calendar year. Germany. I love Germany. I absolutely love Germany. I love the heritage. I love the food. 
Um, and I love the country and we have toured there a bunch. And, uh, but that's been, it's been 10 years since I've toured Germany. We'll definitely be back. Um, as soon as this crazy mess is over, I got to go get me a schnitzel and some beer. Yes. Okay. Here's a, here's a question, a new album related question. Why did you change the name Yee Nation to the song Chevy's Hemi's Yodas and Fords? And to answer that question, that, that um, Yee Nation was really just an intro track that I made for the beginning of the song Holler at our live show. So it's the song, and, the, and there's like a dobro part that goes, That's a song that was just a track intro for us to walk on to before we played Holler. And in the background, there's these voices that are like, Yee Yee Nation. Ye ye nation. And I used that track because it became popular among the fans. I I used that track and wrote actual words to it instead of just ye ye nation. I wrote a song, Chevys and Hemis and Yodas and Fords, and wrote words to it about how um, it, it's always a big discussion between country boys and country girls of where to put your money, Chevys, Hemis, Yodas, or Fords. Not to be confused, all this can't be confused with the other intro song that we used to use that now is in the intro of this podcast. So you heard that at the beginning of this podcast. Um, and that's a, that's a completely different version of Yee Nation. There's my Germany question, and then I'll, I'm going to do one more here. Um... How about this one? What happened to your dad? And maybe I never, maybe I never said this, um, but, but dad died from a heart attack in 2014. And I, I could probably do a entire episode on that because that was a, you know, a crazy time in my life. But um, yeah, it was sudden. There was no, um, there was no medical problems leading up to it. There was no, uh, he had no issues, no symptoms, no anything. It's just one day um, mom was with us and we had just had baby Lincoln at home and mom was visiting with us and baby Lincoln. And when she went home, she found dad and he was sitting in his chair and he was gone. Um, it was just a crazy, crazy thing. And maybe one doctor's appointment, they could have found that he had some kind of huge massive blockage and they could have done emergency surgery or given him some kind of statin medical something. Uh, maybe, maybe could have fixed it. I know now. Um, so those of you out there that are over 50 years old or you, you got parents, um, make sure you go to the doctor, make sure you're checking out that old ticker of yours, check out the heart. You just don't know. And, um, Man, it took dad quick. It took him, it took him without, you know, like a thief in the night without any warning. So just be careful. Um, it is the number one killer. It, heart disease, the number one killer. So it will happen to someone around you if it hasn't already or if it's not you. So that's something we should probably talk about on, on, on another podcast. But thank you guys for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for this platform. Thank you for allowing me to express myself and my feelings and all my maybe strange to you views. Um, but uh, it, it means a lot that you're listening. And if you haven't subscribed to this podcast yet, please subscribe. It helps me know we're doing good. It helps me know that I need to keep making more of them. And it helps like that ad that I read at the very beginning. It helps people like that go, hey, we're going to support this podcast with our with our stuff. So love you guys. See you next time. Yee yee.